Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sonographers in the Cities, episode 20. I'm Lynn. I'm Giselle. If you're new here to our podcast, welcome. We have been having so much fun answering your questions that we are continuing the Q&A with this episode. So before we get started, please don't forget to set your notifications and rate us five stars on Apple Podcasts. And if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to Giselle's channel to, for more episodes. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> yes, so guys, thank you so much for listening, tuning in wherever you listen to podcasts or like Lynn said, on my channel. Uh, last week, I made a mistake and did not record my video. So hopefully I'm doing it right right now. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, yes, please hit the subscribe button. We definitely have been growing as far as my YouTube channel and the podcast. So it's been exciting. And a lot of the feedback we've been getting has been really good. And you guys really like the question and answers and just talking in general. So we definitely appreciate you guys tuning in because there's so much to talk about. And some of the reviews we've read are really cute and they're cool. Uh, we, we like to read those. So definitely put some reviews in if you guys haven't yet. Yes, definitely. Um, I love reading the reviews. I love reading... Um, the comments on actually the forms that um, you uh, submitted because um, a lot of you introduced yourself that you stumbled upon the podcast and that you really love it and I was like so thank you so much for stumbling upon our podcast <laughs> we really appreciate it yeah we definitely do interact with you guys and we do see everything we read everything so like Lynn said before, don't forget to tag us in anything that you post and we're here for you guys. That's the point of this podcast really is just to like be living life together and just getting through the days. Obviously, uh, I look really tired because I just got off of work and I just returned from Disneyland. So it's just been a crazy week for me. What about you, Lynn? How's your week been? Um, I just started my first quarter. It's been really chilled, except yesterday I was out and about in the city. I walked in around Queens, walked in Manhattan, walked in Brooklyn. So like the three boroughs and now I'm really tired and really sore. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like fun though. That's it an is adventure. fun. Yeah. yeah. But you know, I have a clinical at 7 a.m. tomorrow. So I'm just going to take it easy today. That's good. Yeah. At least you get to like take a break and enjoy your time before you work hard some more. Oh, and, yes, definitely. Uh, and you haven't started clinicals yet, right? No. So this would be the start. <laughs> yes. So by the time you're listening to this, I've had my first week of clinicals. Wow. That's exciting. <laughs> That's exciting. It, so it is very to exciting. Catch up next week about mm -hmm. it. Um, yeah, so speaking of which, last week we did talk about the questions that you guys asked us was where do you want to work? How long does it take to get a job? We kind of touched up on sonography career where you can work and like things in the workplace, for example, Lynn uh, likes the operations part of it. It's funny when you mentioned operations, I thought about my operations class, my operations yeah. major <laughs> class. Um, and so we're going to kind of just talk about the career in general. Um, there's a few questions that we wanted to talk about and dive into. You guys, uh, the first one is, someone asked, is it crazy to just switch careers and try going into a program that I'm interested in? We wanted to tie that question up too with another question you guys asked, which was, do programs prefer you to be younger? We're going to talk about these two things. They kind of go hand in hand because one, we're talking about age. Two, we're talking about switching careers. Uh, some people go into this field later on in life. And then some people go into this field knowing straight from high school that they wanted to be a sonographer. So lots of things we can dive into. And we'll basically just start with Lynn first because, you know, she switched careers. So let's see what she has to say. I certainly did switch careers. Um, you know, uh, actually, before I answer that question, I was I just had a thought. Um, what you just said, Giselle, like how people switch careers and then there are um, others that are going straight from high school, like way back when this career was just, you know, like a 
switch career type of profession. It's not something that you can see at a career fair or um, those, uh, what's that called? Job, job, job fair? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Those job fairs um, that, you, that you have in high school. So yeah. I think that's the big progress in this field. Don't you think? Yeah. It's like definitely we're already grown. seeing it. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's, it's just crazy. No, I, I just funny because like I wanted to bring up that I was listening to a podcast. I was looking at other ultrasound podcasts and one of the episodes they were talking about how it's the growth of ultrasound. It's just been so immense and like not just the career itself, but like more widely known and that we're getting more praise now than ever before. And that's true because ultrasound was never, it was always just like behind the scenes. No one really knew or thought. And now this is what we're trying to do is bring ultrasound awareness. So it's, it's, it's getting there. Yeah. We're definitely seeing yeah. it. the results. Mm-hmm. So back to your question. Um, if any of you know my story, I, used to be in retail management but now I'm switching careers I switched careers in 2021 yeah that's when I did right 20 no 2020 is when I changed that was quarantine 20 I feel like the times like (laughs) feels like forever ago yeah um 2020 during quarantine decided to change careers and I'm I am how old I am I'm 28. Definitely had my 20s lived out. I had a lot of energy. I moved a lot. I I was very ambitious with my last career, um, climbing the ladder and everything. And then I got burned out and, you know, corporate America kind of kills your soul. <laughs> I hear you. Yes. So I took quarantine as a um, silver lining to get that, you know, that vacation that I needed and then changed career into healthcare, which um, I don't regret at all. Um, I did have some hesitant about like, oh, is it okay if I change careers? Because, you know, as an Asian American, you kind of have that like, even if you're like, I'm not going to do it because, you know, that's, it's like, I know who I am and all that stuff. But you know, like how your rates, at least for me, you know, there's like an age where it's like, you should be doing this and there's a timeline for everything. But, you know, I'm just like, it's never too old to go back to school and it's never too old to start something that you want to do. You know, one thing for me is that like, I do not want to live with regrets and I don't regret my last career. I don't regret what I did after I graduated college, because I did a lot, I learned a lot. And that actually like really helped me during this program, because I can um, filter out the, can I say BS? Yeah, you can say BS. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think, it's like, what is the, <laughs> the word? Mm. But we want to be unfiltered and raw, right? <laughs> so, so I can like really filter out all like the BS and stuff and just focus on the things that are actually going to make a difference for my journey, my goal, and how fast it would take me to my goal. So I I definitely don't think that um, the programs wants you to be younger because as we uh, already established, the profession is growing. So we need workers and sonographers. So it's just the matter of it's our different perspectives. So programs do not prefer you to be older or younger. It's just what you can bring to the table. Definitely agree with that. And it's like, when you're saying all that, I have all these thoughts in my brain Mm -hmm. and it's like, I want to say this and that, you know, it's just so much. Um, And when you say this, which is really good to say is because switching careers means you already have experience in something you've had experience with customer service you've had experience with working in a job you know a lot of times when you come out of high school you don't have that experience you don't have I mean we're gonna everyone has their individual hardships and things like that but you don't have the actual some people don't have the actual job experience or opportunity because I didn't work until I was 18 and in college and like 
what also another thought that came to me when you said you were 28, I'm like, we're the same age. I know. And I've been doing <laughs> ultrasound for five years and you're just getting started. Exactly. And it's like, you're still young. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I've, I remember like a YouTube comment where someone said they were like 21 and so worried and scared and like frustrated. And I'm like, I remember commenting back saying like, you're only 21. Yeah. You know, you have so many more years to come, you know, and I know a lot of people have this like timeline in their head, like you said, thinking about this, 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 this is how it should be, la, la, la. Like, I thought I was going to become a nurse, be married, have kids by 24. And I'm like, <laughs> that didn't happen, you know? And I have a video on YouTube that says like, it took me six years to become a sonographer mm -hmm. because I did switch from nursing to ultrasound. And, you know, I back then too was like, oh my gosh, this is taking me forever, you know? But I look back at it now and I'm like, I had so much experience from being a server, an assistant manager, working in retail, working with um, sales. Like I had so many different little jobs while I was in college. And that helped me, I think, become the sonographer I am today as well, even though it had nothing to do with ultrasound. I learned so much in retail. And so, you know, it just goes to show, like you said, it doesn't really matter if you're younger or older. It's do you have the drive or the passion or uh, like when we talk to Amanda, right? She's a mom. Mm -hmm. She says you just do it because you have to do it. Like you just get through it and you push through because you need to and you have to. And with that kind of mindset, it doesn't matter if you're younger or older. I've had a student. Uh, in our hospital once who was in her 50s you know and think about all the life experience she's had and all the people I've ever worked with I'm sure people that you've met in your clinicals all they all basically said ultrasound was their second career like um, she's a manager now at one of the clinics and she said she used to be a hairdresser you know and she just mm -hmm. was like one day I just wanted to do something else and then there's another lady I met and she did something else and she switched over. She looks super young, but she's like in her forties and she like just graduated recently. So it just goes to show like you really don't have to be younger to get into this field. But yeah, it's, it's just a really interesting concept because you have to think about where the people are in life, what they've been through, wh how they grew up or, you know, everyone has different hardships, different pathways um, some people get pregnant at a young age and then don't have time to to like get into the career. And then that's why you get a lot of like moms or dads in the programs later when they're older. So, yeah, it's definitely not crazy to just switch careers and try going into a program that you're interested in to whoever asked that question, yeah. which is a great question. You know, I, I always say is just if you're interested in it, go for it because it's never crazy. And there's a saying that I forgot what it was, but it's basically um, saying that if you keep thinking about it and don't do anything, then what's the point? Because you're just going to keep thinking about it until you do something about it. So not crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's honestly uh, also like if it's there in your mind and you're really thinking about it, right? That means you have some kind of inkling and some kind of want for it you just have to figure out is it worth your worth the struggle worth the stress to like get through the program apply and do everything you have to do just to get in the program <laughs> and then get through the program we always talk about it hard to get in hard to get through it but it's always worth it at the end when you when you're in a career that you actually enjoy and like to to be in which a lot of sonographers really do enjoy it I mean, how are the people that you worked with um, in your last clinical site? Did they have their <laughs> jobs? Like, how was that? <laughs> well, funny you said, because on my first day, one of my uh, sonographers, she's like, um, you're in the wrong field. <laughs> you said that? In a jokingly way. Oh, oh, in oh, a joking oh. way. She's like, you're in the wrong field. We could have gone to nuclear. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
um, I was like, I don't know. I love learning so far, yeah, and it's it's very fascinating. And I don't think I'll ever get bored with the patients <laughs> that we have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, um, a lot of people when you're in this for the long haul, you can either end up really still enjoying it, right? There's a lot of people who still enjoy it, and then there are those people who get tired of it or need a change of pace, or Definitely. you know, like you, you. I mean, any for anyone, I feel like if you're at a place for 10, 15, 20 years, it could be like. I definitely Daddy. see like a different um, mindset with um, sonographers at my site who are in their, um, not my my department alone, but like with the other department, like Echo that um, was in the same room with Vascular. Um, the sonographers who are in their 50s to the ones in their 30s to the ones in their 20s or like just out of, um, just completed their program. The one in the 50s, they're just, you know, wanted to get through their day and be done they they sometimes don't even want to teach students you know they don't have that passion but the one in their 30s they're willing to teach and they're willing to uh let you practice but the way they're teaching is different from the ones who just graduated out of school because they know you best and they know how like like how as a student you know so that's it's just very different depending on how many years of experience they have and then how many, how much like passion they have then. And it's very cool to observe like on things when I just started clinicals, I would my gear towards the ones who just graduated their program so that they can explain what I know best. And then for scanning and practice, I gear towards the more senior sonographers who've been in the field like five to 10 years and then they would teach me their skills. So I, I get to like pick each of their brains. Yeah. That's the cool thing about clinicals, especially like you get to see other people, you get to see how they how they scan, what their protocol is like. Not everyone scans the same exact way, you guys. Everybody kind of learns the same protocol, same general things. I mean, anatomy doesn't change, you know, pathology doesn't change. However, the way the techniques are, the way people approach their patients, the way people, some people label sag and trans, some people label long and what's the other one? <laughs> I don't know. Do I want to say like, short, but I don't think they say short. <laughs> I don't think it's short. They say but just say chance and long. Chance and long. Yeah. Like they like some people use long, some people use sag. Like, I mean, it means the same thing. Some people um, you know, do the whole in vascular. I don't know how you guys do it in your protocol. Some people do compressions all the way down. Some people like take the pictures and then some people do trans sag color doppler all in one sitting. So, you know, everyone does things differently, but we all end up with the same, we should end up with the same result. And it kind of just goes to show that everyone's taught differently. And so like Lynn is picking everyone's brains and that's exactly what you guys should do because you learn from everybody and then you form your own way of how you do stuff almost. And then you do it until, you know, you make a mistake or someone tells you like, hey, you shouldn't do it that way or a radiologist says something and that's how you learn. And it's really cool because I, when you say that you have people from different ages, I think about the people I work with mm -hmm. and our senior techs and they have been doing this for over 20, 25 years. And actually they are, in, in my hospital, they love scanning still. And I'm like, sometimes we're like, I don't even know when they're going to retire because they still scan <laughs> so much. They're still happy. They still enjoy it. Like they don't have injuries, you know, which is <laughs> a common thing that people ask. Like, if I do this for a long time, will I injure myself? You know, and they have no, no injuries whatsoever. They're still young and hip. One of them goes skiing all the time and they're in their like, I believe their fifties, maybe early sixties. And, and then our supervisor is in his 40s. So he's supervising senior techs that are older than him. Mm -hmm. And um, just, I feel like everyone that I work with just loves what they do, that it's just a great environment to be in. And I really wish that for everyone, you know, because it's hard to work in an environment where, you know, there's like negativity or like people who don't enjoy mm -hmm. what they're doing. 
like that makes a big difference in the career or in any career, you know, but it's definitely interesting to know that there's going to be all different types of ages as a student and as a sonographer. Yes. And uh, definitely as a student, you should be an open, keep an open mind that not all sonographers want to teach. (laughs) That, that's the thing. I think that's that's. I think that's my biggest fear, because you know, it's like you're a student, you want to learn, but if someone doesn't want to teach you, like, how can you learn? Yeah, yeah, and also, like, also, don't think it's you, or like, don't blame yourself. Mm-hmm. For a lot of students, they like are frustrated, but it really has to do with the snogger. Sometimes they really yeah. just they don't get paid extra to teach. <laughs> no, they just no, have they to. don't. Yeah, they're supposed to do it from the bottom of their hearts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> supposed to <laughs> I think we got a little bit sidetracked there I know um, all right uh, what was the question uh, do programs prefer you're younger and is it crazy I also wanted to add um, just that because the question do programs prefer you younger um, just because uh, DMS is a female dominant pro uh, field um, I did get a lot of questions. Um, this is actually from a mom asking for a son. <laughs> if it's uh, if I have any male students in my program, or if it's not uncommon to have males uh, in the field, what do you think about that, um, Giselle? Yeah. So, what do you have to say with five years <laughs> experience? <laughs> well, I'll tell you a lot of. A lot of like really great sonographers are males um, that I know of. Very, very smart, very well-mannered, very patient, um, and also very like caring sonographers that I know are males. I do work with a few males. We have a department of 19 people and we have one two three four we have like five like five I think five or six males in our department and then um I've worked for a male who owns a business he's like the he was so helpful so kind he helped me with anything and everything taught me vascular and what I know um and then I know uh, many of you guys know Jesus Jesus he's the male (laughs) sonographer. And he always talks about it too, where it's like, it's kind of like, I don't want people to think it's like taboo or a field where males cannot go into because males can go into, right? And they might have a little bit of a harder time in general or like OBGYN. But um, if you go look at Christy, Christy DMS's video, she interviews a guy and he talks about what it's like when he has to do pelvics and things like that. I mean, imagine because they have to do breasts as well. So I honestly think that if you're a male and you want to go into this field, like not to be afraid about it, unfiltered though, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be hard um, because it's very, you're very close and one-on-one with your patients. Um, But yeah, I mean, I feel like if you're male, not, that shouldn't stop you from going into the field, especially because there's so many options, so many places you can work. And uh, there's a lot of males in this city that I know. So what about you? Do you have any? I didn't have any males in my cohort, but um, I did know of one or two like after I graduated. So for me, let's see. My clinical site, we had male sonographers um they have they their scans are so pretty like I learned so much from them and you know be just being a male versus a female it doesn't really matter as long as you're you know you bring results to the doctor um as a student well my program started with three males in a program of 25 so three 22 females, but they're no longer with the program. But I don't think it has anything to do with males versus female. It's just, you know, their personal um, problems or 
um, personal issues like some or hardships that some couldn't continue. So it's definitely possible, you know, it's, yeah. it's just the nature of the prof- how the profession came about. I think like, like we said, it's mostly second, um, second career to a lot of women who are already a, um, another uh, career in the healthcare field, or they wanted to switch careers, more stable one. It's just the nature of the, the profession. But now that it's growing, so it's growing interest in younger populations and more and more exposure to. Did you hear that truck? <laughs> okay, in New York. Welcome to okay? New York, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. At least the ambulance didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> but I find now I lost my train of thought. But <laughs> my main point is that it does not matter, and. As long as you, like I said before, bring can bring it to the table and do your best and be the best sonographers, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, actually, four of the male sonographers, they're older in my department. And um, many of them actually cross-chain from x-ray. So I feel like if you have an interest, you know, do some research, think about it. And for the mother who's asking for her son, if he really wants to do this, I feel like he's capable of doing it if he really wants to. And a lot of times males go into general or males go into vascular or echo, um, but they can go into general too. It's just when males do a transvaginal ultrasound, they typically have to have a, a chaperone. And that's a whole nother topic in itself, but they pretty much have to have a chaperone in the room with them. And I'm not sure for breasts, but I, I only assume so, but I don't really know that one hundred percent. I just know vaginals, they have to have a chaperone. Um, Cause we have a guy in the ER who is there Saturday, Sunday, Monday, 12 hours a day. And every time he has a pelvic, because pelvics are very common, he has to have a a female chaperone in the room as well. Um, When I worked at outpatient for testicles, the females actually had to have a male chaperone or a female chaperone, um, but we had to have a chaperone for that too. So that's a whole topic in itself. But that is something that males have to kind of deal with when they do it. Um, I think also too, like most people think of ultrasound they think of babies so I feel like men don't really like care to like (laughs) do ultrasound but then they find out you can do other things and Mm -hmm. they're like oh you know so sparks interest almost and that's why we want to bring ultrasound awareness because a lot of people don't know we do more than babies (laughs) that is correct we do (laughs) a lot more um yes it's like a really really fun uh I don't know. I, I really, every time I think about it, every time we think about specialties, I just don't regret going into echo and vascular. Do you ever, do you ever have that moment where just like, I'm glad I made this decision. <laughs> yeah. Always. Sometimes <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know what else I would be doing right now if I wasn't doing ultrasound. Mm-hmm. Um, but we definitely should do an episode on the specialties like individually and like go in depth. Yes. With them, I feel like that would be a good episode. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting how much we can do with ultrasound. Um, so, yeah, you know, if you guys are interested in switching careers, going into the field, getting into a program, definitely do it. Don't think it's crazy. Go with your gut and with your heart and mind. I feel like if you do that, it makes it a little bit easier because you really want something, right? It's not like you're forced to get into it. Yes. And it doesn't hurt to try like uh, your gut feeling is going to always be there, even if you don't do it. And I highly recommend to do things that you don't regret because I don't know. I don't know about you, but the feeling of regret is horrible and it just <laughs> stays with you forever. Oh, so yeah. if you uh, have an inkling about it, want to do it research look for resources we're here (laughs) so and you're always welcome to reach us i'm on instagram at dms diaries just i was at ll just Um, she also has a discord uh, community i'm trying to think what a facebook group (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, the Facebook group, I actually post like a lot of um, abnormalities and uh, pathology oh, yes. on there. And then um, people ask questions in there too. And everyone helps each other out. Um, you know, it's not as big as the other sonography groups, but it's it's mainly geared towards, it's a smaller community. So it's a little bit more intimate and everyone kind of is able to get to know each other in there. Um, so yeah, definitely join the community, but you know, just think about it. There's people from all different ages, from high school to older uh, moms and dads. So really there's going to be someone there for you and someone to talk to someone probably who's been in the same boat as you. Um, and yeah, males, if you want to get into this field, do it too. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's conversation. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a, I think it's a common one. It's a common occurrence. So hopefully this episode will be very, very, very helpful to all of you who are listening and watching. And we have a lot of questions, actually. So we'll continue this for the next episode. And we'll continue until we'll finish all your questions because we definitely want to answer all of your questions. We definitely do. I'm curious if like, because um, there's going to be question and answer parts but like a zillion i don't know if we <laughs> right. should, we, we'll see we'll see how it goes but we definitely are going to always answer your guys's questions so keep them coming yes <laughs> i just i just love seeing after every episode there's new questions uh coming in and it oh. just creates more conversation which is the purpose of this podcast so yeah. thank you so much for just giving us your inputs your questions your feedbacks because it's what keeps us going yes there's always going to be more to talk about and only so much we can talk about in 30 minutes. So yes. thank you guys. Cause you know, we can talk a lot. <laughs> we can talk forever. I know. And yes, it's a good thank thing. Thank you so much. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing because that's what a podcast is for. Yes. So hope you guys have a good week and stay tuned for the next episode. And yeah, we'll see you guys. I can't next believe one. it will be mid March. I know. What this heck? month is flying by. So this month is women's month. Um, by the time you're listening to this, Tuesday, March 8th is Women's, is it International Day of the Women or Women's International Day? I'm not sure, <laughs> but I know that we celebrate women this month. So I want to thank you all the women that are listening to the podcast, um, all the women that are in our Sono community. You guys are making a great impact and we thank you for it. Yes, you guys be proud. And let's continue to do this. Yes. And just fun fact, Disneyland has Minnie Mouse on their front of their gates for (laughs) Women's Month because that's never happened in the history of Disneyland. It's always been Mickey Mouse. When you walk in and you see people taking pictures in front of the Disneyland train, like Mm -hmm. right when you walk in or in the front, the iconic Disney spot, it's usually Mickey Mouse. But this year they changed it to Minnie Mouse this month for the first time in history for women. Woo, go women. <laughs> go be awesome. Yes, go be awesome. Stay positive out there. And we'll talk to you guys soon. Yes, thank you. Until next time. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>